In this video, I will discuss the fork system call and how it functions. Uh, as some background, we, um, we want to know what a process is. A process is a program in a state of execution, which means that It is active and it's resident in memory. So uh, to that, to make that happen, the operating system would have loaded it into memory. So there's process A, if you will. And with respect to the process, there is its context. The context for us is stored in a st structure inside the operating system called the PCB. So inside the PCB, there are other things uh, there's a lot of uh, details about the process. Um, one of them is the context. For us, uh, we'll simplify the context to have uh, just one field for now, which is the program counter, or where in the in uh, process am I currently executing. Assuming I have already executed some number of lines, and this is where we are right now, so the PC is going to have that value. Now, obviously in memory if this is your zero and this is the max of your memory somewhere in memory let's say this process is at zero x a b c d i'm just going to make them 16-bit addresses uh, so the pc is um, for this particular process is going to be whatever a b c d plus whatever the offset os so uh, let's call that offset p so that it's easy so the pc for this guy is now currently um, 0 x a b c d plus the offset p um, because we want to keep it simple we're we'll just going to look at it that way so a different process let's say process b it's pcb that's inside the operating system will also have its instruction uh, pointer or pc which is let's say this one is at some other address let's call this d e e f so it's and he's executing at some offset let's say it's offset g so that's his current execution point then his address is going to be 0 x d e e f plus g the reason why we need to make sure we we have this background is now what happens when a process let's say a process a executes the fork system call somewhere in its code and the question is what happens as a result of this so to to explain that let's see what the fork system call is the fourth system call it's a, it's a system call to create a new process. The creating process is called the parent and the created process is called the child. And one of the first things we note about the fork is the child is a clone of the parent. In other words, whatever the image of the parent is, is inherited by the child. Um, what is more, the it's not only a clone in terms of in terms of the code, but also in terms of the state variables and start pointer anything that the PCB stores so the one thing that is different of course is the PC because once a child process is created he's resident in memory so the PC should correspond to that location the offsets are exactly the same so for instance if I have a parent process a create a child process B on a particular line here then let's say this is a child of a child of a is 
resident here they're an exact copy so they're at the same location p with respect to their start just that their base is different because uh, it's an exact copy it's a it's not sharing the same address it's a completely different image a completely different location with the exact same copy the second thing about the fork system call is it returns the child's PID in the parent and zero in the child. In other words, if this instruction here were, let's just say this is CPID equals uh, fork. And this is CPID equals fork as well. Right? So when this instruction was executed, the return value here is let's say the child of A has a, has a PID of 4295, then this value here is 4295, and in the child, it's going to be a zero. So let's take a look at how we use this these facts in order to create a new child and and have its functionality differ from its parent. So let's take a simple example. This is my example. This is the first example. Let's say this is example zero. So in this example we have a parent which made the call fork and at this point so i'm going to draw the 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 flow of of this code like this so the parent is has a main it performs a fork at some point so it in this particular example it has set some variable x equals 1 and it has performed a fork system call so as once it performs a fork system call now we have two processes this is the this this bottom arrow is the parent process and the top arrow which is this guy is the child process so both of them are in the same they they go off with the parent having a pid of the child and the child having the parent uh, PID of zero, a PID value of zero. Not its PID itself is not zero, but it's the return value which we happen to put in a variable here called CPID is a zero. So now the child will execute a conditional statement, and in the child's conditional statement, he will find the PID to be equal to zero. So he's going to do a printf. The parent similarly will come to come out of this condition statement and the parent will do a printf as well in this example but the parents printf prints parent with an x value x equals and he is going to do a minus minus as a pre increment so he's going to get a zero because x was one for him x was one for the child as well but he did a print statement that says child uh, x equals he did a post increment now remember that he has an exact copy of the variable x x is one for him and but they're in different context is context now so his x value is two and then the child goes on to terminate by doing an exit parent goes on to terminate by doing an exit and our code is done now if you uh, want to see what would happen uh, as far as the output to the console in this particular case the output to the console would be a parent x equals 0 and child x equals 2. 
Now notice that the child did not did not continue it just did an exit now there are interesting scenarios where what would happen if the child did not do an exit then he would execute the conditional statement and still execute this part so we'll see some scenarios like that um, this is a simple example uh, where we can we can track the flow of the code as let's take a second example in this second example our code looks like this where we have a, a call to fork so we'll let's look at the flow of this code so we have a parent the main which calls a function fork which results in the parent continuing with another separate process which is a child process child process also runs now the child process is gonna both the parent and the child have a printf statement so this guy has a printf statement and this one also has a printf statement now the ch child pa child is parent is gonna do a hello the output is a hello the child is gonna do a hello and they're both gonna terminate so in this particular example the output is two hellos but the question is which hello would come out first uh, uh, intuition would tell us that the the parents hello would come out first because the parent just started running and the processor wouldn't the uh, the OS wouldn't just kick him out as soon as he creates a fork uh, creates a child he's going to continue to run probably only when he runs out of his time slice or he exits is when the child runs so so the output would be a hello followed by another hello let's take a third example this in this example we have two fork calls so let's see how it proceeds so we have a main again which is making a call a fork call which results in its continuing and makes a second fork call and it continues and has a print statement where he prints hello and he's done doing an exit well the first fork created a child so he's gonna create a child so that's the first child that was created and this child in turn is gonna make another fork call so this fork and also the the parent is going to make his also the parent is going to make a call there that fork is going to result in a child and this the parent will in turn do a printf here which is a hello followed by an exit whereas this fork is going to result in a continuation of a and a printf of hello followed by an exit Our fork here would have created another child and that one would have done a printf as well with a hello followed by an exit so that's the flow as we see it now the question is how does the output look like now th this output is a little speculative for one thing one thing we probably can be sure about is 
the first output is the hello from the parent who created all the children now the rest of them it all depends upon how the scheduler works how these various various processes get created uh, but i'm just gonna go go with a possible sequence um, there's a hello from the first child who continued um, and then this child got a chance to run and and then we have the, the other running to get that output let's take one last example no not this one let's take a different example okay uh, in this example uh, again here's our flow there's our main the main uh, creates a fork calls fork uh, he's gonna for him fork is not equal to zero he's gonna go off and do a printf and the printf he does is this one so uh, x equals one to start with so he's gonna print a p2 where x equals it's a pre-increment so he's gonna do a p2 x equals zero and then he's done he does an exit and th that's his end uh, whereas the the child is gonna run and for the child obviously uh, fork is uh, there is return value of fork is zero uh, we haven't really stored the return value anywhere but we know that if fork is zero only in the child so this one does a printf in the con inside the if loop if statement and he's gonna do a p1 is x equals 2 because x equals 1 for him and now it's 2 with a pre-increment pre of uh, of 1 and then he's gonna come out of this if statement and he does another printf and this time he's gonna say p2 x equals and x was 2 for him because of the pre-increment so he does a pre-decrement and x equals 1 and he exits so the output in this example is going to be p2 x equals 0 from the parent and then p1 x equals 2 and then p2 x equals 1 That's all we have.